Welcome to our second tutorial about spline curvature. Let's start by creating a spline. One point, second, and third. Right click, create. Right click, done. Now let's deselect everything. And first thing I want to do is show you how to create a closed loop. Right click and select close spline. Easy. Okay, let's right click and unselect this option. Now what happens here? The spline hasn't returned to its original position. As you see, the spline is broken right here. Okay, let's undo and undo again. Next thing I want to show you is how to manipulate a spline using the handles. First, let's apply a fixed constraint to these two points. Right click, done. As you see, the sketch is now fully constrained. Now when I click on the spline, some seesaw handles appear. We can move them and drag them in any direction. If I select the spline in another point, the handle I just moved is red. The other two handles are grayed out. That's because when I clicked on it, I activated this handle. And in the status bar, Inventor lets us know that now seven dimensions are needed. Okay, let's right click and deselect Activate Handle. And the sketch is again fully constrained. Let's reactivate that handle. Right click, Activate Handle. In Inventor 2009, these handles were called bow tie handles. Let's check these out, how they work. Basically, the longer the handle, the larger the portion of the spline that's tangent to the handle. We're able to dimension the handle so we can manipulate them more easily. Next to the dimension, you see the letters UL. This stands for unitless. Basically, there's not really any actual distance value associated with this dimension. In the status bar, we see that six more dimensions are needed. I'm going to create a line here. Right click, done. Now let me apply a fixed constraint to the endpoints. Let's create an angular dimension between the handle on the spline and my new line. We'll make it 15 degrees. OK, and now you see in the status bar that I only need five more dimensions now. Let's right click, done. I want to take a look at two more options in the contextual menu, curvature and flat. Let's select Curvature. As you see, a second handle appears, and the number of outstanding dimensions is reduced to two. This new handle controls the curvature radius at this point. Let's add another dimension now. The status bar updates to let us know that only one more dimension is needed. But at the same time, the spline is blue and adequately constrained. In fact, this message in the status bar is going to stay here. And that's even though the sketch is adequately constrained. Let's take a look at the second option we mentioned a moment ago. First, we'll right click. Done. Now let's right click again and choose the flat option. The curvature and flat options are basically the same. The difference, in a nutshell, comes down to the radius. Let me take a moment to demonstrate this. We'll select flat. As you see, nothing has really changed in our spline. Let's delete this dimension. And again, right click, select curvature. Again, right click and select flat. And now the spline changes. Let's apply dimensions. When I cursor over, I see linear or radial dimension options. What we're seeing here is a radius dimension, but a very large one, obviously, 393.701. Let's place it here. Right click. And done. Let's delete this dimension. We're going to grab the handle and adjust it this way instead. Let's apply a radius dimension again. The status bar again tells us that one dimension is still needed, even though our sketch is blue and fully constrained. Right click, done. Now watch what happens. If I deselect Activate Handle, 
the spline curvature doesn't change, and the status bar shows us a fully constrained sketch. Let me click on this spline point here. We see that we don't have dimensions anymore and the handle is green. Let's reactivate the handle. Right click, activate handle, and let's apply dimensions again. Right click, curvature, and lastly, let's apply an angular dimension here. Basically, here is the same value. 1.008 has to do with the tolerance setting. What I'm trying to stress here is that if you apply dimensions to your handles and then you deactivate the handles, you're going to lose those dimensions. Of course, if someone else is working on this particular part, she'll have no idea how you created it, so do keep that in mind. There's another thing that I want to show you here. Let's right click and activate the handle again. First, let's right click done. Okay, right click, activate handle. Now let's apply dimensions. Right click, done. Let's apply a vertical constraint. Right click, done. And again, right click, curvature. Now let's apply a dimension. Right click and done. Now let's right click and select show all constraints, or you can hit the F8 key. Let's delete this constraint here. Now if I grab and drag this point, the rest of the spline changes in curvature as well. My point here is that from a theoretical point of view, it's really impossible to fully dimension a spline. There is so much data in a spline. And this concludes our tutorial about spline curvature.